As a beekeeper, you're familiar with the various challenges faced daily to keep your hives and colonies vibrant and healthy. That's why it's more important than ever to identify and monitor pressure from hive pests and diseases to maintain colony health. A main pest of concern is Varroa mite. However, a weakened hive may provide opportunity for other pests, such as small hive beetles, to cause colony health concerns. Using Integrated Pest Management, or IPM, strategies is the best way to understand the appropriate treatments for minimizing or eliminating these pests. The first step in IPM is to identify the pest. In the case of Varroa mites, it's critical to know how they inhabit and infest the bee colony. Varroa mites are an external parasite of honeybees that only reproduce in honeybee colonies. They attack adult bees, as well as developing brood or larvae. They can cause decreased brood numbers, activate, transmit, and amplify latent bee viruses, which can cause bee deformities and, if untreated, will lead to a general weakening of overall hive health, parasitic mite syndrome, and colony loss. According to research by the Maine Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry, Mite populations can increase 12-fold in colonies that have brewed half of the year and 800-fold in colonies that have brewed year-round. At any given time, up to two-thirds of the mites will reside in the capped brood stage, making it difficult to detect during hive inspections and know how bad the infestation may truly be. Heavy infestations can manifest quickly and ultimately lead to hive collapse or death of the hive. That's why regular monitoring and effective and approved treatments are essential. Two very useful techniques for measuring infestation levels are the sugar shake method and the alcohol wash method. To perform either method, start by finding the brood nest and a frame with open brood. This is critical as adult Varroa mites seek out young nurse bees. Protecting the queen is a very important step in this process. Inspect the frame for the queen, and if you find her, segregate her by placing her on another frame, selecting another frame, or placing her in a queen cage. To perform the sugar shake method, shake the frame over a container to catch bees. A wash tub works well for this purpose. Place 300 bees into a jar with a 1 8 inch mesh hardware cloth attached to the lid. A half cup measurement will effectively scoop approximately 300 bees. Add about two tablespoons of confectioner's 10X powdered sugar to the jar. Be careful to not spill the sugar onto the ground to prevent unwelcome guests near the hive. Slowly rotate the jar to gently cover the bees with the sugar. This will not harm them if done carefully. Once covered, let the jar sit briefly, approximately two to five minutes to allow enough time for the mites to become dislodged from the bees. Then, shake the jar over a flat water surface using a white bucket lid or similar item. As the sugar dissolves in the water, the mites will be revealed. Count the mites to determine the percentage of impact on the hive. Any number above nine mites shaken from your 300 bee sample, or three mites for every 100 bees, indicates an excess of mites in the hive. Return the bees to the hive. A more precise and perhaps more accurate method of testing is the alcohol wash. The sample size for this test is also about 300 bees, but these bees will be sacrificed in the process. In a colony where tens of thousands of bees live, it's always necessary to perform these tests to get a scale of the overall threat. A sample size this small will not be detrimental to overall colony health. Gather the sample of bees in a manner similar to the sugar shake, remembering to safeguard the queen. Place the sample of 300 bees into a container similar to the sugar shake container filled with isopropyl alcohol. In this test, we used a commercially produced container. This container has an inner perforated basket that holds the bees while allowing the mites to be washed or rinsed off with isopropyl alcohol. However, any container of similar size can be used to perform this test. Gently shake the container for about 60 seconds. If using a container with the inner basket, remove the basket and count the mites on the bottom of the container. Alternatively, if using a container without an inner basket, 
The bees can be dumped over a coarse screen 8 mesh, allowing the mites to fall onto a fine mesh fabric screen below to be counted. Again, a Varroa mite threshold of 9 mites shaken from your 300 bee sample, or 3 mites for every 100 bees, indicates an excess of mites in the hive. Another pest for beekeepers is the small hive beetle. One sign of small hive beetles is damaged or destroyed brood combs, as the beetles will burrow through combs, causing extensive damage. Small hive beetles will also eat honey stores and contaminate them. Contaminated honey stores will appear slimy and have a distinct smell similar to rotten oranges. After small hive beetles disrupt the colony, they then migrate and pupate in the soil near the hive. Without a viable food source or a means of reproduction, it's not unusual for a queen to leave a weakened hive, taking healthy bees with her, rendering the colony lifeless. Additional pests of declining beehives are wax moths, whose larvae can cause extensive damage to brood and honeycombs, in addition to other hive pests, such as mice and ants. One aspect of integrated pest management is chemical control. When necessary, use of pesticides can be an important tool for hive survival. Pesticides should be used according to the pesticide product's label in order to use the product legally and get the most effective control. Pesticide products are developed by manufacturers and require review by the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, to determine that they carry out their intended function without creating unreasonable adverse effects to human or environmental health. Pesticide labels cover important aspects of the product's use, including defining the active ingredients in the product, the pests targeted, the crop or site where the product can be used, the amount, frequency, and timing of application, as well as storage and disposal requirements. EPA registers pesticide products, and their unique EPA registration number can be found on the label. While many products contain the same active ingredient, the EPA registration number is specific to a particular product's formulation, so it can be easily used to identify the product. If you see a pesticide product that does not have an EPA registration number, then you know it has not been registered for legal use by the EPA. The environmental hazard section of the label will alert the user if a product could be harmful to bees and outlines any application restrictions. Some pesticide labels include a bee advisory box that also states that a product is harmful to bees. Pesticide product labels are attached to the container. Your local cooperative extension service and online search engines may also be additional resources for pesticide labels. Of course, the internet offers a wide variety of resources for amateur and professional beekeepers alike when it comes to pest control. Some of these suggestions are not allowed by the product's label and are illegal. All pesticide products used inside the hive and other beekeeping equipment must be approved for that particular use. As we just learned, all pesticides go through a rigorous registration process with EPA before they are approved for use. Use of pesticides not in accordance with label specifications, in addition to the use of unauthorized products, is not only a violation of federal and state laws, but can also compromise the health of your colony and contaminate the products of the hive. Moreover, individuals that use these methods could be subject to enforcement action for illegal use of a pesticide. It is important to ensure that your pest control advice is coming from credible sources and that you are using products labeled for in-hive pest control. In addition to considering the legality of these improper actions, this approach can result in putting beekeepers and inspectors at risk of unnecessary exposure to pesticides and can even lead to contamination of the products of the hive, including honey. Beekeepers already have limited chemical resources at hand to combat pests of all varieties. By shortcutting proper procedures or using unauthorized products, beekeepers are increasing the potential for pest resistance to certain chemicals. This effectively removes these pesticide products from an already thin arsenal, in effect making controlling pests that much harder in the long term. Ultimately, these rogue practices harm the appearance and reputation of the beekeeping industry, where the production of healthy 
and wholesome honey products is essential to success. So what are the correct ways to make a pesticide application? First and foremost, use EPA and state registered products labeled for use in hives and read and follow the instructions on the pesticide product label. Those directions outline the use requirements and ultimately yield the best possible outcome for that application. Following these instructions will also keep you in compliance with the law. For more product-specific information, refer to accredited resources online, like the USDA's, Honeybee Health Coalitions, or product manufacturers' websites. Some pesticide products work simply by being placed inside the hive for a certain amount of time. These products may include Amitraz, such as Apivar, Thymol, such as Apigard or Apilife Var, Beta Acid of Hops, such as Hopguard, Formic Acid, such as Formic Pro, or Mitaway Quick Strips, MAQS, Fluvalinate, such as Apistan, Kumafos, such as Checkmite Plus. Other products like oxalic acid or apibioxal can be safely applied with a vaporizer and are subject to specific dosage and require proper handling and personal protective equipment, or PPE. As with any pesticide product, it's essential to read and follow instructions for the best possible results. Also, be aware of product registration changes, as chemical products may sometimes be removed from lists for acceptable usage. Be sure to use oxalic acid that is specifically labeled for use in beehives, such as apibioxal. Monitor your hives after treatment. There are no silver bullets for pest control. For more information on active ingredient rotation, resistance management, and IPM, contact your local apiary inspector or agricultural extension agent. You can visit the Association of American Pesticide Control Officials webpage for state lead agency contacts or the Apiary Inspectors of America's webpage for apiary inspector contacts. The need for personal protective equipment or PPE, such as gloves or a respirator, will be outlined on the label. Ignoring PPE requirements is not only unsafe, but also illegal and subject to enforcement action. The product label should stay with the product for the entirety of the product's life, from opening the package to the disposal of the product, so important label information can be accessed. The label may advise the applicator on proper timing within the season, as well as ambient temperatures where the product will be most effective. You'll also find relevant information, such as product placement and removal on the label directions. Should honey supers be removed or left in place? Is there specific equipment required for application, such as syringes or vaporizer? When should the product be removed from the hive, and how should it be properly disposed of? The answers to these questions can all be found on the product label. There will also be important information on the product label related to the treatment rate, timing, and duration. There may also be restrictions for the number of treatments allowed per year, some products limiting the number to two per year, no more than once in the spring and once again in the fall. A product intended to only be in place for a specific time that is left beyond the limit specified on the label can lead to pest resistance or contamination of the hive. Finally, the label will instruct users on proper disposal techniques and storage of remaining products. Proper storage of any pesticide will always include use of the original product container and all label information. It is imperative that beekeepers carefully and thoroughly read and understand pesticide product label information. This helps protect yourself, your bees, and the beekeeping industry. Unfortunately, Varroa mite, small hive beetle, and other hive pests are here to stay. However, by utilizing IPM strategies such as consistent monitoring and properly applied treatments, your hives and colonies will continue to thrive and yield quality honey products for many years to come.